Oh. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And I see a battery light. Yeah, I see <laughs> I'm like, oh no. In this episode, I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Char on Aging White Teas. Char is best known for her popular tea blog, Oolong Ao. We brought a few uh, aged whites onto the show, but aging whites and aged whites uh, is not a topic that I've tended to focus on either on my own tea journey or on TDB. Char is someone that's consumed a lot more, is more experienced with, and has thought considerably more deeply uh, about white tea and sort of the journey of aging. Um, fortunately for me, and hopefully you as well, uh, Char is based not too far from me in Seattle and agreed to come on and answer some questions. Uh, during this episode, I really enjoyed and learned a lot about what and where the current conventional wisdom is on aging white teas. And I think if you have any interest in this topic, you will as well. Uh, we go over three basic um, sort of big points uh, in the course of the episode, starting out with more sort of intro topics on the certain types of white tea, what speed they may age, and how they might age differently. Um, we're talking sort of going over Bimudan, Silver Needle, uh, Moonlight White, that sort of thing, and what their sort of individual trajectories might be. Uh, then we go on to talk about how many of the uh, aged whites that are available may have been stored in the past, uh, both in terms of location as well as methodology. And finally, we discuss the sort of con current conventional wisdom of storing white teas and what you should do if you're interested in aging some, uh, some white tea for yourself. Enjoy. I'm joined here by Char. Thank uh -oh. you for coming on. <laughs> hey. And today we have a sort of a, a very topical topic. Um, Char and I have been going back and forth about a few questions. And we're going to be talking about a topic that I don't know that much about. Um, and Char here knows <laughs> at least is been exposed to a whole lot more than I have. And that is on aging white teas. Um, and when I was filming um, an episode on, uh, on aging poor, as I've done quite a few on, uh, I noticed that questions on white tea kept cropping up. And so I decided I, I better bring on someone to, to talk about some of these. Yay! Um, okay, so we are going to start out with some more basic questions just on um, a few of the different types. Um, so one thing uh, I think that's pretty confusing to more casual uh, white tea drinkers, such as myself, um, is all the different types. Uh, white tea itself has kind of a loose definition yeah. of sort of sun-dried tea. Um, Baimudan, Shomei, Moonlight White, uh, Silver Needle, uh, Gongmei. Uh, these are all different mm -hmm. types of whites. Um, since we're going to be mainly focusing on aging, mm -hmm. Which of these are good to age, and do they all work as far as aging? They all work. As far as I can tell, I've tried all pretty good age whites in each of the categories. It really depends on what you think tastes good. Uh -huh. So I guess my personal taste. So I'd encourage you to try each one of them. For breaking it down, it goes Silver Needle, then Bimudan. I'm not going to pronounce... I'm, I'm going to butcher pronunciations because I'm a writer, so I don't have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Those have a lot more bud content, especially Silver Needle's all buds. And the second picking is the Gongmei and Shomai. And Gongmei is a higher grade. And I find of all of, the, all of them, the more bud heavy, the, probably the more greener and delicate of a profile. Okay. So I sometimes feel they take um, a bit longer of a descent to get more of a darker, honeyer flavor. Whereas Shomai and Gongmei are usually off the bat already a stronger, darker tea. Okay. So when you're talking about leaf grade, are you talking yeah. about sort of like bud? Bud, bud or tippy, rather. whichever you want to break it down right. as. Rather than like being a higher quality. Yeah, well, Gong Mei is technically a higher quality, but I think it also has more buds in it too. Okay, gotcha. And then... Uh, okay. Moonlight White Moonlight is its White. own thing. Specifically, Moonlight White is grown in Yunnan, uh -huh. and it has a different uh, processing with the wilting. They lay it flat, and they intentionally make it become a white, like kind of more, one side will be more darker. Hmm. On oxidize okay. compared to the other, so you have that white and black split. Okay, so that should maybe be categorized slightly differently. A little different, okay. but yeah, and there again, there's some tea nerding fighting going on on different varietal, but that's way above my okay. insanity to try and understand. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you've had good examples of yeah. all five of these yes. aged. Okay, and you would say that they do age a little differently. Yeah, they age a little differently. Okay, especially going slotting on the buzz scale. Okay, interesting. I mean, I guess that makes sense uh, as far as like a poor scale yeah. too. It's like sort of bud heavy. Uh, 
productions do age and they can age well and but whether you'll like it or not is yeah. a lot up to yeah. personal preference um, so uh, another question what sort of characteristics would you look for in selecting a white tea uh, to put away for aging um, also specifically wanted to address sort of like oxidation um, one tea that I had uh, in 2018 that I really liked, um, one white tea was uh, White Tea's Old Arbor. Mm. Um, and that tea was new, 2018, but it felt very oxidized. Mm. It brewed a pretty dark color. Um, Denny and I filmed an episode on it, and it was a pretty interesting tea. So I guess, oh, okay. uh, what Char sort of characters characteristics would you look for? Well, I usually find, like, tea? with um, compression, unfortunately, uh -huh. I really hate saying this, but I find the tighter compression I prefer for aging. Okay. Like, I find it holds in the aroma better, but it just sucks because everyone knows, like, really compressed white tea just sucks to deal with. Okay. Like, you're going to need, like, a battle axe or whatever the hell you do to deal with that stuff. So that's more of a pain in the butt. Pain right? in the butt. But okay. I find the aroma and the aging, it's a lot more easier to age, and it just huh. comes out nicer. Um, and I find, like, yeah, darker profiles I like more because I, I think they just have a little extra wilting on there to make it dark from the get-go. Okay. But it can go on the other end of there's... I know Yunnan Sourcing has one tea that is a Moonlight White that has been excessively wilted. And when I drank it, it was like, wow, this is just a black tea. You don't, you kind of lost a lot of the characteristics of white <laughs> tea at that point. So there is a bit of a balance there you kind of want to look out for. But I think definitely if you're going to age it yourself, I like guess similar to Poir, you might as well pick out the nicest stuff you can get your hands on that you okay. can afford, willingly feel of spending. And put it away. So, kind of like Puar, I guess the question I would ask is, like, should it be, like, should you be selecting, like, especially strong material? Do you think that's yeah. better to age? And again, down to personal taste, too. Right. Because I, I know, like, if you want something, in the intent of getting something really dark and really datey, you probably want to go with a Shumai. Okay. Because those are ready or have that head start into being dark. And, yeah, like, Y2T's Old Arbor is a good example. It's a really, really hmm. dark. It has a lot of body to it. Okay. A lot of thickness. And that usually translates really well. Okay. So if a tea is, like, strong, thick, um, and even if it's oxidized, such as the Old Arbor, yeah. or fairly oxidized, then it could be a good could candidate. Could be one, yeah. Okay. But it's at the same time, too. Like, I guess with Puar, you can start with shitty material, and it's going to come out shitty at the end. So mm -hmm. you definitely want to try and get something nice. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And would you expect sort of like the, so on the counter end of the spectrum, like a tea that's really like light and floral, mm -hmm. uh, how would you expect something like that to age? I've had some, like a silver needle is like the prime example of one that's really right. light, really floral, really delicate. And I've had 90s stuff that tastes, it's really, it gets really honey. It still gets dark, but it doesn't get that date and richness that hmm. a really old white tea can get. Okay, so you would expect some of the like the lower grade, technically, uh, white teas to sort of develop that sort of dark tea yeah. taste, whereas yeah. like Silver Needle and to a lesser extent by Mudan might yeah. be more honeyish. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay, and um, this one may be a personal preference mm -hmm. question as well, but when is the sort of ideal time uh, for you? To drink mm. an aged white tea do you like the most at 10 years 20 years so the breakdown i have is that the first year white tea is really good that's the fresh stuff okay after about one to three years it's not very good so is that sort of like uh it's awkward that, stage? yeah the awkward nasty okay. stale hay nasty flavor profile usually isn't that great around three to five is a good stage i like to get that's that's when you start getting like the staleness and strange flavors kind of kick out and you get more of that honey aspect to it okay then around past that like seven ten is when you should be tasting something really dark and nice it almost sounds like it ages uh faster than poor in I guess some ways so, yeah because yeah. i mean uh for me at least i i tend to classify poor fairly similarly actually in just terms of stages but drinking the really fresh mm. stuff within a year or so and then between one and seven years, maybe it tastes good, maybe it doesn't, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't overly judge the tea. And yeah, yeah, so it's my awkward. personal preference. Right. If you like, if you want to go more for that honey flavor, you don't yeah. want any of the green notes anymore in it, or you want something like that right. just tastes like medicine <laughs> at that point. So you'd expect to start to taste some more aged flavors around three to five years, it sounds like? Yeah, it sounds like you'll start okay. to develop the more of the oxidation around okay. then. Okay, and what about beyond that if we're talking like a larger time scale and i know the history of aging white teas isn't as long yeah. as poor but like let's say a 20 year old 20 tea. Year. 
Yeah, from the 20 year old tea, I definitely, you get like the medicinal side, you get like the strong dates. That's, I guess, the prominent feature of aged white tea. Okay. And at that point, you definitely are tasting storage at that point. Okay. Similar to pour, if you can taste like grandma's closet kind of uh -huh. note, notes into it. Interesting. Okay. And do you like it more at like 10 years versus like 20? I think like, I, I have stages. Like, I think around like the five year mark, I quite like. But I have some 90s stuff that I have a really hard time keeping my hands off of because it's really good. Okay. So I think or, or 90s is my personal favorite if I was going really old. Okay. Interesting. Um, and I guess one follow-up question to that is we talked a little bit about how compression might mm -hmm. impact it. Would we expect, because I know that a lot of the older versions mm -hmm. of white teas were not compressed, yes, right? Yeah. Um, so would we expect that compression to maybe change that time scale slightly? Or Yeah, I feel like it does. Like, um... I've had like some loose material that ages really well. Mm -hmm. Like some of my 90s stuff is loose and it's awesome, but you can't viably store that stuff as a consumer because you need a lot of room because white tea is very voluminous. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I get like a t 250 gram bag and it's like, you know, this monstrosity yeah. that you have to try and deal with. Yeah, cake and, a cake. and 200 gram cake is yeah. like a little tiny cake. And I noticed when you have like some of the really compressed stuff, there is some variability. Like you'll notice the, the right. interior... The exterior versus the interior is a different state of aging. Yeah. I don't know if you get that a lot in poor. I don't have that many old stuff. Ah, interesting. Okay. So you get like some you want to chisel out the middle mix into uh -huh. yeah, versus yeah, yeah. the exterior. Okay. That makes sense. Interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. With the, it, the, the more compressed stuff I definitely find, it has more of the aroma. More, you might okay. linger more floral than the yeah. looser stuff, but they yeah. both age really well. Okay. And have you had any aged white tea that you think may have been aged too long no i haven't well I, the oldest one i've had so far is 80s right and we, we had that together privately right and it was good but i know at that at that point the price isn't like worth it at that because when you hit the 80s and 90s you're paying quite a bit per gram yeah i mean you're dealing with the product that's much more scarce in quantity yeah. so and even so more so for white tea yeah that makes so. sense Okay, so as far as you know, at least, and as far as your tastes go as well, you haven't had a tea that you're like, ah, should have drank this 10 years ago. No, I never okay. had that, unless okay. it was a question of the storage went wrong, which is another disaster altogether. Right, right. Okay. A lot of white tea is grown in Fujian. Um, is this where it has been historically stored in the past? Uh, where else in China uh, or mm. elsewhere in the world has it been stored? Well, I've had a lot of Fujian. Because okay. I know that is bulk of where it comes from and it's more famous from. And okay. I've had a lot from Yunnan as well, because I guess it's been really kicking up okay. to have more white tea coming out. Right. May have sort of a poor crossover yeah. in the sense of... And yeah, I've had a lot of Fujian store stuff, Kunming and Guangdong are the big ones I've had. Okay. And it, does it feel like people have been starting to store a lot more in Yeah, the past I feel decade? like it has. Uh-huh. I know for... Because like, I think, well, I guess back to back up... Pressing white tea wasn't a thing until around 2007-2008. Okay. So you're, that's why it's, you can't really find really old compressed stuff. Like, I have stuff that's older that's compressed, but it was, you know, compressed at a later date. Okay. So it would have been, like, material from 2001, and they... Pressed like, it. In 2009, they're like, oh, maybe we press yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um... And I think around, you'll find a lot of stuff more around 2012, 2011, and some in 2000, bit of 2008 is another bubble where you'll find, yeah, a lot of stuff you can find that's already compressed and hmm. has been stored. Because okay. I think around that time, it was, they're, they're starting to get really into it. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, and, and since then, there's a lot more coming out. Right. And it seems like there's some sort of uh, sign pretty significant crossover with the poor industry. Yeah. It's like a lot of, even in the West, it's like a lot of the uh, poor vendors are also like sort of these aged white tea slash yeah. compressed white tea vendors. Yeah, it's, a, it's an easier, like, it's less steps to it because all you have to do is wilt and dry, but I think it also wilting definitely takes an, a special expertise to get right. Yeah. So that's the bit of a difference, but it's a little easier. Yeah. And, okay. it's, and it's hip right now, obviously, too, and it's been selling pretty well, so it was obvious, easy transition to get into that. Yeah. And have you noticed on, um, so uh, for those that are not familiar, there's not a lot of, Pura that comes out of Fujian, yeah. um, but it's a relatively hot and humid place, mm -hmm. a little bit north of, uh, of uh, Guangzhou. Um, so Guangdong, um, Fujian, those would both be pretty hot and humid. Mm -hmm. Kunming, 
famously mm-hmm. not so hot and humid. Have you noticed much of like a differences in the sorts of storage that you're you're that, tasting? Yeah, that's something that's really strange for me is I've found not too much differences. Like I've okay. had stuff that's stored in Kunming, but to my surprise, I thought it wasn't stored in Kunming that tasted more aged and darker than the one stored in Fujian or Guangdong, which was I found really strange, but I don't know if there's something at work here with a Maybe it's heat that's more in the play than humidity. So, uh-huh. it was still, we don't have much data since, yeah, with a yeah. lot of it's being stored 2008-ish. Yeah, or maybe it just uh, the way, that, yeah, maybe it just ages faster. Than yeah, before. or like, um, you know, a lot of it is kind of like just stuff they found in the back of a warehouse that mm. now all of a sudden is actually good tea. Because uh-huh. that's changed into a in- more interesting profile. And so that's we don't what, know how well they right. treated it until that point. And that would probably be a lot of the tea stored in Fujian. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so obviously aged white tea, new thing. And uh, to my knowledge, there isn't any specifically famous tea such as like the 1988 yeah. Qingbing. <laughs> and, and I mean, some of that is probably mm-hmm. like the wrappers and the fact that they haven't been wrapping it and those sorts of things yeah. until recently. Um, so what is our best guess to how it's been stored historically? Like, are we thinking yeah. about clay jars, sealed storage? Is it sort of best yeah. to think of it sort of like Pu'er? Um, so, yeah, it, whether it's Fujian or, or Guangdong. I think vendor-wise, I think a lot of it's just been stored, like, in, you know, giant tins, giant bags. Okay. I think the cakes, I think it seems variable. Like, I've heard some that they... They've just been story like poor. They have their own, you know, big cases of them in boxes somewhere. And for smaller other things I've had, it's just a lot of airtight. Okay. Because like usually when you when you're dealing with fresh white tea, it is um, has to be airtight for. So I imagine they just lingers on. Okay, so it sounds like uh, people have been storing it. Uh... So probably the older versions, which would be the the uncompressed versions, they've been storing, however, yeah. and clay jars, maybe some of Yeah, sealed. say, or maybe boxes, right. or the warehouse kind of style. Yeah, okay. So uh, in terms of white tea storage, um, uh, I've seen a few of the school mm-hmm. thoughts in the West, and it, you were telling me earlier mm-hmm. that you've seen a few different vendors post, but... Uh, whereas there might be hundreds mm-hmm. of posts on, like, U.S. poor storage mm-hmm. at this point... Um, there is really not that much yeah. on white tea storage. And I saw a sort of Twitter thread from um, Peter Lista, and he was talking a bit about this, and he said that he did a dip, deep dive on it. Um, it's perfect, perfect description. Right. What? And uh, he found sort of three schools of thought. Um, a, aged whites are for suckers. <laughs> uh, obviously, mm. neither of us fall in this camp mm. since we're filming this. That would be a much shorter <laughs> video. Uh, B, treat them like poor, or C, treat them like oolong, um, sealed without adding humidity and kept cool. So it, we haven't talked about aging oolong in this uh, episode, but the main school of thought, or at least the conventional wisdom with aging oolong, is that you want to keep it sealed away and humidity is your enemy because it will turn the tea sour. Um, so it's very different from poor. Um, so which of these camps would you say that you fall on? I push more for the sea, so airtight. Okay. Like, I find, it, it's really, we still, we don't have as much data, again, because, you know, back to, we got teeth mostly from 20, 2008 to two, 2012, mostly, so we don't have much to go on, but I've, I've had teas in my storage age, airtight, fine, mm-hmm. without any ill effects, and produce, like, a darker profile with airtight. I think... Because white tea has less processing involved, that there's probably, I think it's more susceptible to exterior aromas and issues. So I hmm. think airflow is a deaf problem, especially for us smaller people when we have, you know, we don't have a warehouse full of tea. In the sense that you want less airflow. Yeah, I want less airflow and to hold more aroma in it's like, I think my concern most I have for white tea is like, I think one of the weaknesses of white tea is what it loses in the age is that you don't have much of an aftertaste, you don't have much smell to it. And I find, yeah, less airflow kind of tries to keep that intact Hmm. from my own storage. Okay, interesting. And that's a little bit different than Pu'er because I think you lean, you're more okay with a little bit of airflow for Pu'er. Yeah, and usually you have to, especially if you're increasing the humidity. 
right for us but like unlike oolong we're not re-roasting it to kind of remove the humidity as far as i know though i was thinking about that the other day thinking i wonder if we could do like a touch roast on old yt if that would do anything to any of the, the more sour weirder storage ones right but have, that's another experimentation for another day yeah have you had some that have picked up sort of sour yeah marks? i've had some okay. definitely i think guangdong okay. storage stuff i had a so, few sour nasties so maybe something that's picked up some uh humidity along yeah the way. humidity or okay. it could also be off smells too because there's some where it's like this smells like grandpa's closet or in a basement or right. a kitchen uh -huh. sponge yeah. And from what you're saying about sort of picking up smells mm -hmm. easily, it sounds like you would probably want to keep this, um, if you are storing cooler already, mm -hmm. separate. From yeah, that definitely. I, I guess I can talk about my failure storages on white tea. This is a good, good way to learn is when you destroy your own stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the major failures, unrecoverable to white tea failures I had was storing it in my pool, pumador with my pool art. By accident. <laughs> By accident. By accident. Well, I have two cases. I want two cakes. I did this too. One was an Asian Moolite white cake. It was briefly in the Pumador, I'd say six months-ish. Okay. I think it was a 2012 or 2011 cake. And okay. it actually did pretty good. Like, it came out a little darker than I would recall. It was really hard to tell because it's already a really dark tea. And what parameters do you keep your Pumador at, for, um, for reference? At that time, I was not... It was... I guess it, it ate Los Angeles storage on that one. So it was pretty warm, and then my humidity tends to be in the 60s. Okay, sure, sure. Um, so that one was fine. Uh huh. But my dad, I did not, I did not keep it there. <laughs> okay. The other one. So you still have that tea? I still have that tea. It's it's step. It's now airtight. Okay. Um, the other unrecoverable one was a white tea I bought very early in my poor buying days, and I thought it was a poor for some stupid reason. <laughs> So I bought it in 2012 or 2013, and I got stored with my Pumador, with my Shang in Croc storage, Los Angeles, and also in Seattle storage for, for a more fridge setup with Bodavita packs. And what happened to that? That tea? that tea was destroyed. It, so, it it did it actually strangely didn't age that much. Like huh. it was still quite light, but it well I guess to prime it back up again, my my Pumador is mostly younger stuff. Like I've okay. been buying. Yeah, since around 2012, 2013, and I tend to buy younger, so most of my stuff is younger. So yeah. how did the tea get destroyed? Did it, it just... was like, it was super stale. Like, okay. there was no, f like, very little flavor when I drank it. Interesting. And... Did it, it turn sour at all? It or? was sour, it was very bitter, and it was kind of huh. smoky. Like, it sucked all the nastiness of young Puar <laughs> into this little cake. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and I, I tried airing it out, and it was gone. Like, it, Yeah. Huh. Had you tried the tea before? Yeah, it was a silver needle cake. Okay, so, so it was sort of on the lighter. Yeah, it was already floral, lighter. Yeah. Flat. And, and the flip side of comparison is I had a 2014 silver needle that a vendor sent me for review that I probably forgot about. And I yeah. left it in somewhere. I found it again. It was a Mylar sealed bag and it tasted dark and honey and it was more age tasting than this little poor cake that sucked all the shang out of okay scent so do you think there's any need to add um humidity or anything like that I, I don't know that's the thing i think we need to play with right is like whether like we can try adding humidity or we can try adding heat right one of those things might help but i think at the same time like your household airtight it will age so it's like kind of guaranteed uh-huh oh, and, okay. and that's pretty foolproof yeah too. You... and i guess the second storage failure was also a pumador style poor style is I had I bought white two tea came out with the, these uh, little white cakes of old whitey, okay. And I yeah, bought yeah. yeah I bought two of them. One of them went into a crock. Very uh -huh. similar. Like I had my pour in it before, you know, little loose fitting lid, bovita pack in, and after about, I think it was a year and a bit, I pulled it out and it lost all smell. Like there was no nothing really was really like huh. I had no fragrance at all to it compared to the one that I threw in a tin with a couple other white teas and it smelled great. It was still fine. Hmm. Okay. Same tea. Same tea. So I was yeah. like, oh no. So that could be again. I don't know if it's airflow because... Was it, that sour too? Not really sour. Just it was losing all of its okay. essence. <laughs> and unrecoverable. I, I threw it in a tin and hoped it's going to be okay. <laughs> so it's still around. Okay. It's still around. We'll have to come back to that uh, later. 
Yeah. And so how, how would you say, and you talked a bit about this just in your previous answer, um, of sealing whites. Do you store all your white teas this way? or how Yeah, do, how do you most of them, like, I get big tins and I jam them in there, but I've accumulated so much white tea at this point. I have a fridge that I just jam them all in. Okay. I've been playing with a bit more of, like, the microclimate kind of style for, like, similar to poir, where you wrap your cakes, uh-huh. like, in a bag or saran wrap and store them together. Okay. To co- And I don't open that fridge. I haven't thought about introducing heat. I, I already heat my poir storage, so uh-huh. I might try that, but... And do you add any humidity? No, right? Uh, some da- I've, I've been playing with it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you say is the sort of humidity that yeah. settles that? Yeah. Yeah, I think that one, I'm thinking it's probably in the 50 to 60. Okay, so a it's, little bit Yeah, more. I'm not... I added a few tobacco buttons once to see what happened, but... Okay. Yeah, it's kind of... Okay. It's doing its natural state in Seattle. Have you had any other experiences with white tea you think has aged poorly? Um, mm. That I, You talked about the stuff from your own yeah. stash, but a lot of people are aging white tea, yeah. and you've been exposed to a lot. Yeah, I've had a few random bad buys. I think the main one, I guess, when you circle back at, at like the point, it could is it a vendor scam? Is like some a lot of it is not sold honestly. So there's mm-hmm. times where I thought it was poorly stored, but as in it wasn't really stored. Get something that's a 2008 and it arrives and it's green as fuck looking. Yeah, and it's like yeah. more like 2018. Yeah. yeah, and other stuff where it's like definitely takes a few years off. From what stated with, but sometimes we're not really sure. Right, and, and there's then, really no way to prove yeah. yes or no. Yeah, the then age. then I guess it goes back to personal taste. Like I don't like it tasting sour or like uh-huh. kitchen sponge dollar store smell. Like that's never that great. But okay, you know. Who so knows? it sounds <laughs> like a lot of the common errors would be like picking up bad aromas, bad aromas, and maybe stored a little too humidly. Humid. Um, any other. Anything and, I'm missing. And right? I think, yeah, going, losing all, fl- like I've had some that's like, it's old, but it has no flavor left in it. And that might be the air, the airflow. The airflow, okay. airflow issue. Well, I guess an interesting point that has I could bring up as well is um, I've had Pacific Northwest stored stuff for quite a while. Like I had a few times, uh, someone I knew that had a 1990s uh, silver needle stored in Pacific Northwest, airtight in a tin in their closet they forgot about it, and it was amazing. Okay. So, yeah, they haven't done anything to it because they honestly forgot about it. <laughs> so it sounds like a lot of the best examples have been sort of happy accidents. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the point of the white tea is right now is still happy accidents. Uh-huh. I'm unsure. Oh, wow, This I found this tea. Grandpa had a crap ton of it, and now it's amazing <laughs> yeah. and worth something. <laughs> So, um, all right, so this is the last sort of major question. If you had to give advice on how to mm-hmm. store it, um, like put it on a shelf, um, a crock, a yixing jar, a pumador, what would you recommend? Well, I guess the big one is uh, we, I might change my right. statement in a few years because we still don't know enough and people may, may play around a bit. Right. If you... So if you're watching this in yeah. 2027... <laughs> this is, look at the timestamp. This is 2019. You're watching yeah. videos in crappy 1080p. It's probably you're yeah. So like your 8,000. Like if you know, if you, you can play with it with you want to see what comes up, like mm-hmm. the old white disaster I had. And if like if you have airtight, it will age on you. Like mm-hmm. it aged on me fine. Forgetting the hell about it and sealed mylar or just in a tin. What What about um, if you put just if you had white tea cakes, you just put them on a shelf. Bad idea. Yeah, I think it'd be bad. I, I, you can probably slop a bit if they're like super compressed. Mm-hmm. So I think that some of the vendors I've had that had that kind of set up, it was fine. But right. yeah, it's. So put a bag on it. Put a bag on it. Yeah. Put it, put it away. Don't put yeah. it near the kitchen. It's kind of very similar to other teas. Yeah, so I just think it. Too airflow, much airflow. Yeah. Airflow, I think. Is the hey, I don't, I don't even think poor needs that much airflow. Yeah. It sounds like white tea might even need less. Less. Yeah, and then, yeah, we'll experiment more. I mean, again, we'll cha- keep your eye out. Maybe we'll change our mind in a few years as we get more, uh, like, information and people have gathered more experiments and figured out what tastes good. And I guess, yeah, I guess something is just try and, uh, lots of different range of white tea at different ages to see what you like right. before you throw in the t- time investment. And it sounds like humidity, you might need... Uh, a little l- less. A little it, less it than like pure. Um, it's a little unclear, like... We don't. Have, do we have yeah. any examples of a tea that you think was stored like dried out? No, it's just usually the airflow. Like the airflow. I think we okay. we we had like um, 
like before this we started recording, we had the 2014 Gong Mei from Y2T, and it was brittle and yeah, like you were commenting on the brit brewing of it is strange, but it was you know fine and flavorful, but yeah, it's interesting. Okay, um, anything I missed because that's all I I've got. Oh, I know. You can throw it in the comments if you missed anything. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Char, for appearing. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.